Hi, it's Grandpa, and today we're going to read Arthur's Thanksgiving. Please click like and subscribe, and now we'll begin. Arthur's class was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. Mr. Ratburn was about to announce the director for the Thanksgiving play, The Big Turkey Hunt. Arthur chewed his pencil. I hope he picks me, whispered Francine. They all held their breath. I've chosen Arthur to direct the play, said Mr. Ratburn. He handed Arthur the script. Me? The director? said Arthur. Oh no, grumbled Francine. This is going to be a disaster. Arthur's first job as director was to assign parts. The narrator would have the most to say, but the turkey, the symbol of Thanksgiving, had the most important role of all. Secretly, Arthur was glad he wouldn't have to be the turkey, but who would play that part? At lunch, Francine gave Arthur two chocolate cupcakes. She wanted to be the narrator. Buster even let Arthur borrow his Captain Zoom spaceman. He wanted to be Governor William Bradford. Being the director seemed like fun. Arthur thought Francine would make a good turkey. Never, said Francine. I want to be the narrator. Besides, I have the loudest voice. No doubt about that. Francine would be the narrator. Arthur showed Muffy a drawing of the turkey costume. Lots of feathers, said Arthur. It's a very glamorous role. Yuck! Vomitrocious, squealed Muffy. I should be the Indian princess. I have real brains. Brain, I've saved the most intelligent part for you, explained Arthur. No way will I be the turkey, answered the brain. I'll be the Indian chief. Buster, you're my best friend, began Arthur. The part is real easy, only one line, and it's the best in the play. I want to be Governor Bradford, said Buster. Arthur was so desperate that he asked Binky Barnes. The turkey is a strong and powerful animal, argued Arthur. Yeah, without saying a word, it can make you look like a fool in front of the entire school, said Binky. The play was only six days away. Where would Arthur find a turkey? Arthur knew he could count on his family. I'd love to be the turkey, said his father, but I have a dentist appointment that I don't want to miss. The world is full of turkeys, joked his mother. You should be able to find one. I wouldn't be caught dead in that outfit, said his sister D.W. Let's talk turkey, said Arthur over the PA system at school. The best part in the Thanksgiving play is still open. If you're interested, please come to the office at once. No one came to the office. In fact, the principal left the office laughing. Arthur put posters in the cafeteria. He placed ads in the school newspaper, but nothing worked. Arthur had another problem, too. Muffy complained about everything. I should be the narrator. My parents are paying for the cast party, she whined. Francine would not take off her movie star glasses. They're good luck, she explained, but she was having a hard time seeing what she was doing. Buster couldn't remember his lines. In 1620, he recited, we sailed to America on the cauliflower. <laughs> was that the boat that the pilgrims came over, the cauliflower? Oh, no, that was the Mayflower. <laughs> oh, the rehearsals went from bad to worse. When the pilgrims and Indians decided to celebrate their friendship, said Francine, they began to hunt for a turkey. We cooked beans and pumpkin pies, whispered Sue Ellen and the pilgrim men went off to hunt for a turkey. We made cornbread and picked cranberries, said Muffy. Oops, and the Indian braves went on their own turkey hunt. 
Then it was time for Francine to present the turkey. When the Indians and pilgrims finally found a turkey, she began, there was great rejoicing. Today, when we think of Thanksgiving, we think of turkey. She glared at Arthur. Don't worry, Arthur promised. I told you I'd find a turkey in time. As a last resort, Arthur decided to rent a turkey. But that wasn't such a good idea. If you don't get a turkey by tomorrow's performance, said Francine, I quit. Everyone agreed. No turkey, no play. Arthur went home to think. He thought about turkeys while he did arithmetic. He thought about turkeys while he played piano. And he thought about turkeys while he and D.W. did the dishes. Boy, said D.W., if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. The next morning, Francine, Muffy, and Buster stood before Arthur. They weren't taking any chances. Do you have a turkey? They asked. Arthur just smiled. The whole school filed into the auditorium. Ooh, said the kids when the lights went out. Shh, said the teachers as the curtains went up. In 1620, we sailed to America on the Mayflower, recited Buster proudly. Whew, said Arthur. The play continued smoothly. Muffy didn't drop the cranberries. Brain had his costume on correctly. Sue Ellen said her lines in a loud, clear voice. And Francine had even taken off her movie star glasses. Then it came time for Francine's big speech. She crossed her fingers and began. When the Indians and pilgrims finally found a turkey, there was great rejoicing. Today, when we think of Thanksgiving, we think of turkey. There was a lot of fumbling behind the curtain. Arthur took a deep breath. He walked on stage. As soon as he did, the audience began to laugh. Arthur turned bright red. This was going to be even worse than he had thought it would be. The turkey, Arthur began, is a symbol, a symbol of, of, of togetherness and thanksgiving, said a chorus of voices behind him. Arthur turned around and smiled. I guess mom was right. The world is full of turkeys. Okay, turkeys, all together now. Let's hear that last line, loud and clear. Happy Thanksgiving! <laughs> Look at all those people wearing turkey beaks. <laughs> well, happy Thanksgiving to you. Hope you enjoyed the story. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Bye-bye.